up with another episode of Roosevelt Sounds Off. This Roosevelt Sounds Off part 55. And today we are doing a live remote on the corner of 16th and Holman on the great west side of Chicago. And I have with me um, Untrail. He is also not on YouTube, but always on Facebook talking about the real deal about what's happening in the community. So I, I need to actually, um, I come to him um, on uh, YouTube. Oh, not on YouTube, but on Facebook. What makes you go and do some of the stuff that you do, like some of the videos and stuff that we have seen in the community that you do? What well, makes you do so, you know, all the videos, one, you know, I used to be a part of that, right? so I know a lot of things that's going on. And I know, like, I basically, I know the neighborhood, I know everything that's going on. I know things that's out of place. I know how to record certain things. I'm going to catch, like, people out there, prostitutes. I catch people out there, some people that get shot, and get, you know, get murdered, all type of different things. So, but the thing is, I feel like I record the stuff is really for the safety and awareness for the community to let them know exactly what's going on in the community. A lot of people don't know. You know, the news bring it to you, they bring it to you, they be watered down. I bring it to you, I bring it to people. Straight, raw, oh. And um, also, too, do you think that um, you can do like a better job of doing that? like the mainstream media does by it being like watered down and everything because sometimes you know us in the community sometimes you know we get like one version of a certain story and then you know everybody who lives in the neighborhood sees the whole like real version of something that happened um so do you think that you are doing a better job at reporting some of the stories than the mainstream media does yes i'm doing uh Excellent job at it. For one, it's like this is my backyard, right? I know everything. <laughs> you go get a person that don't know anything about the community, what's really going on. They on the outside looking in. And I get to different scenes and the, the, the media out there. They ask me how to do certain things because they don't know how to do it. But me, I know how to do it. I know how to get everything. Some people, some people, they they not going to talk to certain people. I get different people to talk to me, let me know what's going on. But when the media get that, they, they lost. They don't know what's going on. They just really, it's a job to them. But for me, it's really what I know. It's a hobby for me. And have you been in the neighborhood like all your life or whatever? Yeah, I've been in the neighborhood my whole life from really, really the West Side, Holy City, K Town, been all the whole life. And you know, what are they like today? Warm, um, sunny day. You know, even this is October, I mean, it's almost 80 degrees here in October in Chicago, you know, which is a beautiful thing. But sometimes, you know, with the stuff that we see on social media, or even the stuff that we see on mainstream media, are you ever concerned on nice warm days like this of the violence in Chicago or the violence in this area in particular? Because if you remember back in the summertime, away from here, like a couple of blocks down, you know, there was a guy named Antonio who was shot um, on camera while he was on Facebook. Yeah, right down here. Right down here. Yeah, I know. And um, are you ever concerned about this kind of stuff that you see, especially in Chicago on warm days like today? No, I don't really, I don't be concerned with it for myself, but, you know, I know I'll have warm days be a lot of people, a lot of violence I mean. And also, I know when the violence really, you know, turn up on the weekend, a holiday weekend, mm -hmm. that's when the violence turned up because you get people, they be high, they be drunk, they be off the drill. So they really, that's when all the violence occurred. Hey, Jim, hey. So they start, uh, weather change. Hey, what about on like warm days like today? Because it is very, very uh, yeah, you know, today is, like, again, like, today is a warm day. Like, oh, my God, it's not far. Oh, hold on. Hey, you know, but, uh, like, like, today, you know, you people, people going to have violence going on. It's kind of warm. It's almost at the end of the summer. So, it really is fall right now, but a lot of things are happening right now. What up, bro? Yes, a lot of things are happening right now. <laughs> and I see you know a whole lot of people in the community, and this is where it seems like, 
a lot of people are whatever that you know. Yeah. I feel like you know a lot of people. Yeah, I know, I know quite a few people. I know a lot of people. Yeah, 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 I know Fathers, baby, with the church, the grandmothers, great grandmothers, all. Okay. Uh, that's how uh, they don't know it's really like right. okay. okay, okay, okay. Um, and um, so you were here. So what was the last time you were on Facebook? Recording something? Uh, I recorded something. Uh, I think it was like two days ago. A guy get locked up on uh, 12th and uh, second. No, I'm sorry, Spalding and 12th. So we get locked up, I, I recorded that. So a lot of things, my last thing that I recorded, you know, for these the guys, may they all rest in peace. Uh, yeah. Uh, one guy, oh, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry, but that was at Mount Sinai okay. Hospital. A guy, an 18 year old boy, that shot him his uh, chest and his arm. Uh -huh. So, you know, he was on that video. I'm sorry about that. He was on uh, West End and Kilmore. So, what happened? You know, I know I wasn't going to be able to make it up there, so what I did, went to the hospital, waited for the ambulance to pull up. So as I'm up at the hospital waiting, two ambulances pull up, like, hold on, this is not it. So I hear on the, on the, on the scanner, what the police tell I me, mean, I'm sorry, the dispatcher, like, what y'all need to do, y'all need to have heavy security at Mount Sinai now because the guy have a, a large family, so y'all need to have heavy security up there. So the bell went off my head, like, hold on. Go down at the hospital. So, you know, the police didn't put no security up there, but I sat up there and camped out. As I'm recording, I see a couple of cars come in. I'm like, hold on, they say one ambulance. So one guy get out, another ambulance pull up. Like, hold on, what's really going on? So, as I leave, I get, I, I leave, I go on 18 and I kill them. Go record someone got shot over there. But I get a call, like, you know what? You need to get on going Van Buren and, uh, and Central. So I just got killed, they out there right now. So once I get over there, I'm recording everything. Once I'm on recording, I see the ambulance pull out. I'm on the ambulance. So I get to the hospital. I get to the hospital. I'm up there recording. I see cars start flying in. Like, oh, hold on, what's really going on? I seen like three cars flew in. Windows shot out. Tire blew out. So I, I just recorded the whole thing. Ooh. And were they just you know, like today, or just like whenever? Um, I know that the violence like is a concern, you know, for all of us. But with the violence that you see or that you hear about and stuff, especially you know in the area and stuff in which you live, I mean, do you think that there are any solutions or answers in anything for the violence that we see here in Chicago? Yeah, it's a. Uh... <laughs> It's always a, a answer, a solution for everything. One of the one of the solutions are, is that you know a lot of people they home, people not eating out here. So really, what I mean, not eating, they need jobs out here. A lot of people, you know, they are. Uh, how can I put this? Like a lot of people got hated in their heart because people they was born that way. For example, I'll use this for example. It's like you hear, you know, you hear little kids that don't even know really who Donald Trump is, but they got hit in the heart for him already. So now you got these little kids that's growing up. They know who killed their uncle, their daddy, their brother, whoever, their friend. They're going to always remember that. They're going to have hate for that person, you know? Growing up, a lot of people, growing up, a lot of people got, I can say they got, like, um, they got fear that's been going on for over 20 years that they don't have it's like uh, they inherit it. Mm -hmm. So you said you said you said a concern. You said that they have hate for Donald Trump. I think a lot of people are. No, I understand it, but look, this is the thing. Have hate kids, for Donald Trump. You got little kids that got hate for him. And what I mean is, they being told that. What the kids know about Donald Trump? They don't know about. Him. Yeah. But they know, but they family putting the hate in them already about Donald Trump. Why do you think these are kids growing up the way they growing up? Because they got hate in their heart already mm -hmm. as a baby. So I know something when it comes down to hatred and racism, even for that matter, I know that that is a trait that is something that is taught rather than something that you are just born with. Because I don't really believe that anybody is just born like that. I do believe that you have to be taught that kind of hatred or that kind of racism in order to have it or distribute it or whatever it is. Yeah. 
And so do you think that this is a, you know, with the upcoming election in about a few more weeks, do you think that, you know, parents or adults teaching children this kind of hatred for Donald Trump or for anybody, do you think that this is a good thing or whatever? You know, uh, even though it could be appropriate because of some of Donald Trump's policies towards America or just towards black people just in general. You know, I was using Donald Trump for example. Okay. You know, the thing is that what I'm really saying, you know, people, people been having hate in their heart since day one. Uh -huh. They've been having hate in their heart. So the thing is that I just use Donald Trump for example, but you get people, you never get people to get along. When they talk about religion. They talk about uh, which is true. All everything, uh -huh. religion, politics, no matter your sexuality, whatever it is, people will never get along. Yeah, those are three big topics or no-nos in the, you know, community. It doesn't matter whether it's black or white or whatever right about now. And um, when you find out for CDs, right, as you're seeing something, hopefully the audio's not being distorted because we are out here on the corner in the public. But um, tell me, how do you find out about all this? Do you have, like, a or something. No, I don't need I don't need one because I'm in the area. I know everything that's going on. Like, uh -huh. uh, for example, I'm right here on the next block. I'm recording. Police over there locking up. But one guy, he has some weed, right? Mm -hmm. They got down in the whole uh, police department down here. Mm. And then, like a minute later, on 15th and um, Kaminsky, a 25 year old man get killed while all the police down here. So uh, while I'm on live, I, while I'm on live, I jump behind the police all along. Something happened, because the police flying, I jump right behind them. I don't need to know what's going on. Something got to be happening because y'all are flying. And do you actually believe, dealing with situations of police or policing, that, do you think that Chicago police, just like any other police, focus too much on small crimes rather than dealing with the bigger stuff that we face every day. Yeah, they always um, focus on the small crimes. They don't worry about nothing major. You can see, like I just said, they over there locking one gallon for one bag of weed. Mm -hmm. But you got it's just a bag, bag of weed. Get, yeah, for a bag of weed, you got one gallon. Mm -hmm. But minutes yeah. later, somebody got killed. And, and, and we still have hundreds of unsolved shootings that took place here in Chicago alone that many people have not been found or been brought to justice over. But so do you think that police or the law needs to stop enforcing small crimes or what I always say, you know, just stop majoring so much in the minors? Uh, the minors are, so some of the minors are the problem, but you know, I hear what really go on on the scanner. It, the main problem is that you get a lot of people, the police can't really focus on really what they're doing because you always have, for example, let me put it like this, you get people call in for a domestic issue like every minute. Mm -hmm. That's be the main call I hear coming in, domestic, yeah, domestic, they like, man, first what we need to do is figure out what the problem is while this domestic going on. This is the problem that people have no jobs. What is it? People frustrated? We don't know. It's a problem for people to always call in for minor things. So, but, you know, it's just kind of crazy to really need to find out what's really going on with that. And in closing, um, you know, with every single thing that you do and everything out here, and I know that you've even faced some heat and everything for it, too. Um, haven't you with some people on Facebook? And yeah, you can face heat wherever you go. For the simple fact, you're not going to always satisfy people. So no, that's just how it is. Like, you turn it, anything on TV, you're not going to like it. So how I look at it, hey, if you don't like it, turn the channel. If not, you don't got to subscribe to it. A lot of people follow me just to be nosy find out what's really going on in the neighborhood. Okay. That's what, that's what we're okay. Then in closing, what would you want the audience to know like about what you do, crime in Chicago, police or policing, or just anything that you do? What would you want anybody to know? What I want people to know, everybody know about what that job, already know what I do, so it's nothing to talk about. Everybody know the hood, they know what I do. And honestly, around the world, they know what I do, so it's not a problem, it's just, about taking flight. Everybody know about it. Okay, and now if people wanted to reach out to you or follow you, tell them, before we close, tell people how they could follow you or watch some of your videos. All you gotta do, look me up on uh, Facebook or hashtag butt packs, so all my videos will pop up. You can even Google it, it's gonna pop up. Uh, what I got right now, I got about 
three pages. I think I got about like about uh, close to 100,000 people following me. So that's huge right there. I got about five pages. So follow the pages, y'all know what to do. Know what, know what time it is.